Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our research topic is current challenges faced by quantity servant professionals in Sri Lankan construction industry. Quantity servant is one of the most important parts of a construction project from inception stage until the final completion stage. With global development, the traditional role of the quantity surveyor has been changed in accordance with the change in construction environment. Due to this, the quantity servant professionals are facing many challenges at present. It requires urgent and far-reaching strategic transformation if it is to survive and remain applicable. There are significant changes and challenges have been directly influencing to the quantity servant profession at the present state of construction field, which was identified as the problem which provide the base to our research. Our main objectives is to identify the challenges faced by quantity surveyors in Sri Lanka due to market competition of the construction sector, capability and capacity, recognition and relevance in the construction field, and due to the development of the information and communication technology. With reviewing the previous researchers, it was identified that the Mocha and Aditi were able to identify that the construction sector is having an environment with extreme competitiveness, high risk and generally low profit margins. According to Ajay Kumi and Nani, quantity surveys in developing countries like Ghana face many challenges and the highest effect on these challenges is on cost control. Also, according to the research conducted by Yamaga, the general challenges faced by newly established quantity servant firms in Tanzania are high competition in the field and the biggest client ex expectations. And also, uh, many threats have been identified by Frey and Macho under economic trends, globalization, technology, as well as the structural factors identified by Australian and New Zealand quantity servant firms. With the literature reviews, it was identified that no research has been done regarding the current challenges faced by quantity surveyors in Sri Lanka. Also, though the researchers have identified many challenges, many challenges, they have been unable to sort out them clearly with highest priority after the lowest with recommendations. Through this research, the main obligation was to render the duty by filling this gap which other scholars were unable to fill up to date. To collect data, a questionnaire was developed and within the population of quantity surveyors who are currently engaged in construction industry in Sri Lanka, randomly selected 30 professionals with minimum of 5 years of experience were selected as the sample and the question were developed under research problem, research objectives and the referred literature related to four basic categories, market competition, capability and capacity, recognition and relevance and information and communication technology technology based on the literature review of Frey and Marshall. The data analysis was done using quantitative data analysis method. The questions were developed as scale type questions which will measure the weight under 5 point scale method as shown on the screen. After the data collection under 5 point scale method, the relative index method of analysis was used and the averages were taken in order to identify the burden of current challenges faced by quantity servant professionals ranking from highest to the lowest with using the formula as shown on the screen. Now the rest of the presentation will be conducted by our next presenter. Thank you. The outcome of the data analysis is as shown on the screen. As we described earlier, there are four main sectors we consider as market competition, capability or capacity, recognition or relevance, and information and communication technology. We took the frequencies as strongly agree, agree, 
no comments, disagree and strongly disagree. Using relative index techniques, we analyze the data and give the relative index for each sectors by the using relative index for each sectors we give the priorities for each sectors as our major findings uh, market competition have, has the high prioritized area of the each sectors it includes other professional involvements effect of cyclic nature of the market increased competition from multi organizational multinational organization, effect of demand due to lower cost economies, devaluation due to the excessive competition on fees. This second prioritized area has recognized as a recognition or relevance. It include relatively isolated role for key decision makers and clients, effect of the perception that quantity serving services are non-critical to project success, effect of having lack of awareness for the value adding benefits and lack of formal registration or chartered status and also influence, influence to the profession by alternative procurement techniques and self-sufficient clients. Then we identified the th as third priority area of our, res uh, our research its capability or capacity. It is include effect of having lack of suitable skill and experience content survey and practitioners, impact of the aging workforce and undersupply of new interest to the profession, consequences of the shortfalls in the content survey and qualifications offered by tertiary education providers, impact of having lack of continuous professional development programs. Then we identified area with the lowest priority as information and communication technology. It includes lack of shared knowledge, practical knowledge on technological advances, allocation of extra cost, and impact of traditional path. Our findings elaborate that we need to give the priority and attempt to minimize my, uh, challenges in market competition, cognition or relevance is most important to improve the country survey and profession in Sri Lankan construction industry. And we know we not no need to take, give the main priority for the uh, uh, in, information and communication technology sector. And we need to concern in more on under market competition, uh, competition from multinational organization and cyclic nature on and on as well as a professional fee on or professional fee. Improving the knowledge on uh, information and communication technology is the most important thing in Sri Lankan construction industry. It uplifts the standards of country to serve and profession in Sri Lanka. Minimize other involvements and having a standard method in calculating payments with experience and professionalism. It will improve the survival of the country survey profession in Sri Lanka with identical recognition and standard in Sri Lanka. Our research concluded by uh, further researchers can be directed based on other fields of country survey and external challenges including political and social problems as well as differences of the views and opinions of the professional with the gender differences. Finally, our research problem was solved and our objectives were achieved. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Gunadhan and uh, Sanuradi. Uh, we'll uh, have Q and A session at the end. So. Uh, I would like to invite our next speaker, uh, Mr. K. Anochan. Uh, his topic is uh, Application of Research and Development in Sri Lankan Construction Industry. Good morning, everyone. So my presentation is concentrated on this application of research and development in Sri Lankan construction industry. So my overview of this presentation is as on the screen. 
So economists have mentioned always that construction industry, when they compare the construction industry with these other industries, they always mention the final uh, output cost for the construction is very high to this uh, compared to the others. But however, they are still telling that that significant uh, contribution of this uh, uh, construction industry to the uh, GDP of the countries is in a high level. But in other hand, uh, the construction industry still faces a lot of challenges uh, from the challenging economy and this economy changes. Under that, uh, in the latest one of the challenge is uh, based on the increasing changes in the demand. So when you consider always the contractors try to give us fully satisfaction for these end, end users and the employer, during the time that the latest uh, the employer always expect the project with the more function with a lower cost in the limited time. So this is a big pressure for these all contractors and they try to uh, come with uh, new technology and try to, you know, with the innovation ideas. For that, now professionals are recommend uh, for the construction industry to apply research and development process. So generally the research and development process is uh, general terms in this uh, most, in using in this business industry. So basically they use for this uh, mainly for the economic and marketing purpose. But it uh, generally is commonly used for the in, uh, set of investigative ad activities uh, used to, for a new product as well as some ad features for these existing products. But it is not limited into the business or business fields. Also it's uh, expanded to the other industry also. In current days it has used for these other fields that means that uh, hard sciences fields such as this electronic telecommunication and genetic technicians. They also using this research and development process to improve their qualities. So when considering about the, our construction industry, so our construction industry also we have to satisfy our employer through the, uh, with the project characteristics with the actual time and cost and quality. For that, this research and development give a good contribution to uh, improve uh, the quality and the productivity and the efficiency of the material as a management process. So when I come to my research, uh, so that research based on this application of research and development in Sri Lankan construction industry. So this uh, research and development uh, topic is a little bit uh, earlier they have started. For example, in Sri Lanka also we have started in 1980 after the inauguration of these national buildings research organizations in 1980. But and in the initially they have just uh, do a technical consultancy for the contractors. But latest then they have, they have expanded in every uh, aspects of the construction and the construction field. But still we can feel that uh, most of the contractors and these employers not utilize and uh, not uh, using this research and development for the innovation of the construction. So to identify these uh, research problems, so I have uh, find out my objectives. So mainly I try to identify the importance of the research and development and what are the requirements and resources to conduct the research and development and to analyze uh, the methodic system, what are the methodic system we can apply uh, to do that. And finally, what is the lackness? So what are the awareness uh, issues uh, to conduct this in Sri Lanka? So when I go through these literatures, uh, so we ca I can identify it. So in current days, most of the construction industry and always this try to excellent in construction. When you try to go excellent in the construction, so definitely they try to in improve these advanced techniques such as value management, uh, sustainability, uh, whole life costing, and uh, human resource management, uh, health and safety management. So, but health, uh, research and development, it can control overall of these uh, latest technology. Because the, the research, as I explained earlier, research and research not only mentioning that regarding the new product, also it is give the capability to observe uh, that new product, such as uh, organizational management that may give you the training uh, during the process as well as this management in practice such as cost engineering and other other practices and, and also it is giving the innovation ideas for the such as the pre prefigurations so all came through this research and development process finally the construction dynamics that means management process main focus is the resource management and for second one is the requirement for the application. So in other things, uh, most of the researchers have mentioned that uh, this uh, application of research and development is additional cost or additional burden uh, for the contractor. So because of that, most of the people are not ready to or not try to invest for that. So and they can't only uh, do that. And because of that, most of the countries, uh, for especially from the developed countries, uh, for just uh, US and uh, Japan and German, for 75 percentage uh, amount are allocated from the government and they are functioning with this uh, special institution as well as they are providing tax credit and tax incentives to conduct this research and development process in the, their construction. So and that, other than that, uh, there, should, uh, there should be a proper mechanism to do any uh, system. So this is this uh, common system that uh, most of the countries are applying uh, to do their research in the construction. 
especially they try to identify uh, if you, when you start the project they try to identify what are the scope and what is the area they have to acquire knowledge and later they try to uh, try to apply apply the research in that time they gather the knowledge based on that topic finally based on the topic only they try to the experimental development and also the monitoring and give the feedback for that actual process so uh, but I, I already mentioned it is a this process is very uh, high risk and high costly because of that when the government giving the uh, tax or r and d credit for this uh, contractors they are checking that uh, before that there is a test four part test they are using in this common in the developed countries they first they ch check through the four part test after only they allocate uh, the research and or tax credit for the particular uh, projects and next uh, issue is the awareness so when considering about that uh, in other countries uh, such like uh, japan and other countries they are still teaching in the from the university level so particular for in the architect as well as the civil engineer they have separate section to teach the uh, research and development for the construction industry students as well as this they are functioning uh, with a government centralized institution also they have functioning with uh, some other uh, centers to give the knowledge to the industry peoples always they giving the uh, awareness uh, about regarding the government contribution for that so in this my research i have tried because even though i have go through the literature uh, based on this developed countries there is no any proper research that uh, mentioned about the limitations and application of research and develop in this developing countries such like sri lanka so based on my literature uh, i have identified some independence and dependent variables for my research so for that research, I tried to uh, collect data. For that, I have uh, issued uh, random sample questions uh, to the each. Uh, especially, I need the opinion from the architect and engineer and credit service and the surveys. I have distributed through Google Forms. As well as, purposely, I interviewed some people, especially from uh, officers from the NBRO and other lecturers who have the knowledge uh, in this uh, matter. So finally, based on the data, I have analysis uh, the collected data. Especially when I collect the questionnaire, I have prepared based on my variables as well as the in the variables I have written sub variables. The questions form based on my sub variables. After that, uh, the sub variables uh, ranked based on this relative index analysis. That means I have find out the most important. Uh, and using the thematic content analysis with the interview, also I have listed out what are the most burden issues that we have to address in Sri Lanka. So based on that, based on my objectives and the based on this uh, prioritize of these problems, I have listed my findings. For that, I have found that uh, our Sri Lanka construction, most of the professionals know that there's a technology research and development and uh, they know that we, if we imply we can achieve something in the construction. But uh, the problem is they don't have, still they don't have knowledge uh, how to apply and uh, what are the method to and what is the reason for the apply. So, but they have the idea about this kind of research and development in the construction. Second point is this uh, available of requirement uh, resources. Because uh, earlier I explained that this is not can't, uh, only the contractor or employee can't execute. So proper support from uh, requirement from this government. In when you consider Sri Lanka, we have only other than this NBR and we have some research development organization and we have research and development in uh, university levels. But for in, when you consider about the construction industry, other than the NBRO, there is no any uh, resources or resources or may guide us for this construction industry. Third one, uh, there is no methodology. So most of the things, uh, we didn't have any knowledge about this. Yes, we have only the idea. So uh, for that, if you have to imply, we need a proper methodology to guide everyone. So we don't have in country, still we don't have any type of methodology or application to implement this. Finally, uh, the same problem for the other also, that most of the contractors and these uh, employees, they try to go on the traditional path. They don't like to go to the modern technology. They don't uh, try to apply in the uh, latest technology. They try to uh, do their construction in the uh, traditional path only. So based on that, I gave my recommendation for this record. So there should be a tra training program required. So especially for the educational institutions, especially for the engineering and the architect and surveys and the quantity surveys, from the university level, they need uh, additional module regarding the research and development and the importance of for that. And other than that, that SIDA or Concession Development Authority, they should have to give a training for the professionals who is in this market. Because when you're considering it's, uh, Japan's or other countries, they, have, they are one of the policies of their uh, construction ministry is to give the a best. A chances through the private firm is one of the policy to them regarding the research and development. So for that, we also have to recommend those type of things. 
and second one is this uh, support from the governments so even the government giving the support so that is should be increased because we are just only implement for this nbro other than that mbro we have to encourage them through the loans and this funds and other things and uh, third thing is the contractor should be encouraged the most of the contractors uh, because of the additional burdens most of us don't like but when we insert this as a for the expenditures as a preliminary items as well as if they consider during the tender evaluation when the contractor apply as research and uh, development in their project we can giving the tender and also when the during uh, sida giving this uh, r and their renewal of their field of specialty as well as the award uh, excellence in construction award in that time if you give the importance for this research and development application so definitely they will try to move for that uh, research and de development application finally that mbro when i talk with npro they told that even they are guiding even they are advising to the peoples they don't monitor and they don't uh, check whether the progress is going or not so it should be uh, implemented that they have to monitor whether the construction people or the uh, always uh, adapt for that rules finally that there should be a systematic application of method and uh, and that method should train to the all professionals or the high level peoples in the construction industry to apply this research and development concept in sri lanka smoothly so through that i think i have ob uh, achieved my objectives as well as i get the solution for my pr problem and rather than that i will uh, Uh, advice to do some future research uh, for the future studies, especially uh, the role of the government to the implementation of research and development in Sri Lanka. Also, regarding to find out the suitable procedures for the Sri Lankan constructions, including all tests, compare with these other countries. So, finally, I like to thank for, for all uh, give support to do this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Anujan, for fin uh, finishing our presentation on time. So uh, let's move into our third speaker. Uh, our third speaker is um, Mr. T. S. Hetiarachi. Uh, the topic is on project performance development through adoption of transformational leadership into the profession of quantity surveying in Sri Lanka. Uh, it is uh, gap analysis. session here yeah, good morning and ladies and gentlemen uh, so as being an undergraduate student in kdu today i'm supposed to present a part of my final year dissertation um, uh, which is going to uh, we continue with the assistance of my supervisor dr sanjay jay surya so my topic is project performance development through adoption of transformational leadership into the profession of quantity surveying in sri lanka This research is based on a literature review, and uh, when when co when considering the previous work, previous researchers have mainly considered uh, quantity serving profession, its challenges, its opportunities, and in the other hand, uh, the theories of transformational leadership and other leadership styles, and in other hand, about the project performance development in the vast construction industry. So in this research, the researchers assess how transformational leadership can be utilized uh, by denoting the performance development through the profession of quantity surveying in Sri Lanka. The problem statement of this uh, research is that uh, the, exist the existing research on transformational leadership uh, as the, is the first work that has been compromised uh, with previous work that utilize uh, the success of project in the construction industry in relative to the project performance development of quantity service in Sri Lanka. Therefore, this analyzes how quantity surveys can utilize their performance and how they can develop their performance within their industry, especially uh, while they having challenges, opportunities uh, as a result of currently changing uh, nature of the construction industry. This has been justified by see, uh, several previous researchers, especially uh, the selection of transformational leadership for this research is based on that it has been a major concern throughout the whole world that the transformational leadership is the most effective leadership in the modern era. And therefore, the development of Sri Lankan industry has been closely followed by rapid changes as per the Professor Vedikara stated. And 
by considering other international researchers, such as uh, in 2015 by Reddy, he has denoted that the quantity surveys has played a major role in, in, in facing the overall challenges um, in any state or country. Therefore, I, I prefer that transformational leadership is the best leadership style to be chosen uh, to adopt to the profession of quantity serving in Sri Lanka. This research has two main objectives. First one is to identify the research gap of this study, which means the difference between previous studies and this current research. And the second thing is to identify the impact of transformational leadership on project performance development in Sri Lankan construction industry. But this is not worthy because it is always considered and it, the path is limited to the profession of quantity serving. As per the literature review, uh, this transformational leadership theory is mainly introduced by Paz in, in 1985. Therefore, it's not a new theory, very old one. Thus, I have, I'm supposed to adopt this theory because it has been considered as the most preferred one even into today. And with regard to the project performance, I suppose here that project performance can be measured in both ways, either soft analysis or by hard analysis. But in this, uh, throughout this research, I prefer uh, the measuring project performance throughout uh, soft analysis because um, in, in some extent, the hard, anal uh, the hard analysis does not allow to gather correct information in Sri Lankan industry uh, about the project cost and all. They, they could be so confidential. Therefore, I prefer a soft analysis to a project performance, such as um, identifying whether the team members are involved in a proper team commitment or whether they communicate well, uh, such as a soft analysis will continue to measure the project performance. Also, uh, based on the above reasons, this study is, uh, the current research is a turning point in uh, the history of quantity serving because this is the first step that we are going to gather the transformational leadership and, and the project performance in together because many of the many of the people don't know that quantity survey play a huge managerial role in the construction industry. Does this suppose that enhancing the uh, performance of quantity surveys to the future by considering them as very effective managers in the construction field. The methodology of this uh, research is a purposive sampling with the comprehensive content analysis and uh, about 30 literature surveys has been, has been investigated in this current research as a part of my dissertation and in achieving the objects I have considered or I have referred the things in regard to transformational leadership theories, uh, changes and recent development in Sri Lanka, um, quantity serving and transformational leadership theories and the effect of transformational leadership theory into the project performance development. So throughout a vast area, uh, I have gathered the, uh, the knowledge about how quantity surveys can utilize their uh, leadership module or their leadership skills uh, to be effective managers in order to achieve the project targets. This research has been able to find, firstly, that uh, a that uh, the literature survey, uh, the literature survey is uh, emphasized that the quantity serving uh, and transformational leadership, along, along with pointeering concentration on const Sri Lankan construction field, whereby the gap between previous studies and present research is brought into light, which means that this research enlarges that previous studies, uh, previous studies that this kind of research is quite different and quite, quite significant and important to the. Uh, to the quantity serving profession in the future. And also, this, it has also found that Sri Lankan industry have been, has been uh, gathered into uh, huge, huge uh, challenges and uh, opportunities into the uh, profession of quantity serving, especially by uh, uh, the civil war, which was held during the last 10 years, and also with the open economic policy. Uh, so these economic factors affect the construction industry as well as uh, limited to the profession of quantity serving. Additionally, the role of quantity serving in the construction industry uh, is, is found as a predominant fact uh, that assists to the project performance. In overall, this literature survey has revealed uh, that the adoption of transformational leadership increases project performance uh, by the QS profession. So, 
Kiss recommend a, a separate study to be conducted to assess uh, or to find how quantity surveys can improve uh, the project performance by adopting a proper leadership style to themselves. In conclusion, in overall, the study has achieved its main objectives, as I stated above, and with the, with the reference of a huge literature, uh, this study conducts that uh, con concluded that uh, that uh, sep that uh, the Sri Lankan construction industry is uh, mainly depend on like uh, the quantity survey plays a huge role in the construction industry. Uh, the, their perspective is also uh, mainly affecting to its project performance development. Therefore, a, a separate study is required to conduct uh, to assess the leadership role of quantity surveying in Sri Lankan construction industry. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hittiarachi, for that uh, interesting presentation. Um, so let's move into our final speaker, uh, Ms. M. Alvitigala. Her topic is on uh, literature analysis on the importance of converting the dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts in construction industry through team building concept. This podium is over to you. Thank you, madam. Good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to present my research on literature analysis on the importance of converting dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts in the construction industry through team building concept. So this is my this is the overview of my presentation. Sri Lanka is a developing country where the construction industry plays a major role in the industrial sector. As you all know, the construction industry contributes to the economy of the country at a major scale. Although there is a unique culture prevailing in the country, it is a known fact to all Sri Lankans that there are both functional conflicts as well as dysfunctional conflicts in any, sec in any of the uh, key professions of any sector. So similarly, it is applicable for the construction industry as well. Uh, thereby, there is a tendency of key professions in the construction industry to diversify from their main roles, apart, uh, uh, diversify from their main roles, and it can badly affect the performance of the construction projects and damage the professional quality of the respective fields. So I generated my problem statement as the importance of converting the dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts through team building concept for the better performance of the construction industry. So it can be justified as due to the prevailing tendency of uh, key professions of the construction uh, Sri Lankan construction industry to diversify from their main roles. Uh, the professionalism in the key professions have been significantly and gradually a little bit downstreaming. And this situation has arose with the dysfunctional conflicts raised among the professionals and that has led to a deficiency in teamwork. This could have overcome by, the, by integrating the key professions in the construction industry through team building concept. So my aim of the research is to identify the importance of having the team building concept to convert that in order to convert the dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts to, uh, which support the group performance and also to elaborate the means of using team building concept within the construction professionals to integrate their knowledge and skills to produce a team to construction project. So I collected my data through uh, this, uh, this entire research was a literature analysis and I collected data through many uh, research articles and selected best few articles of 12 numbers uh, based on the following topics uh, as shown on the screen. So, so let's see what is a conflict. It, according to Thomas in 1974, it is a process that begins when one party perceives that the other has frustrated or is about to frustrate some concern or benefit. Also in Callister, uh, also Callister in 1995 says that it is a process during which one party perceives that his concerns are opposed or frustrated by the other. 
according to Wu Gongdong in 2017, he states that uh, there are both constructive and destructive effects on the project performance. That uh, conflicts can have both constructive and destructive effects on the project performance based on uh, how the conflicts are generated. Uh, if they are when they are generated through functional conflicts, they have constructive effects. When they are generated through dysfunctional conflicts, they can be have they can be uh, destructive effects on the project performance. Also, he states that uh, to achieve the project success, it is essential for a project team to collaborate with each other. And he identifies a team conflict in three types, task-related conflicts, process-related conflicts, and relationship-related conflicts. Uh, he also identifies that task-related conflicts are catalysts for collaborations. It increases the co cohesiveness in teamwork. Uh, leading to functional conflicts and process related conflicts and relationship related conflicts are detrimental to collaboration which means uh, they are occurred from dysfunctional conflicts. So a dysfunctional conflict is a conflict that leads to the decline in communication and performance of a group. This dysfunctional conflict can be an overabundance of a conflict and lack or due to lack of uh, sufficient motivating conflict. According to Pamela Fay, functional conflict, which is the positive form of the dysfunctional conflict, could be good for an organization. It promotes the healthy exchange of ideas, clears the air, and promotes creative thought and keen decision making. So let's see how this team building concept can integrate into converting dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts. Basically a team, a team building concept is a process by which the members of a group diagnose on how they work together and plan changes which will improve their effectiveness. According to Paul Buller, it is a planned series of meetings facilitated by a third party consultant with a group of people having a common organizational relationship and goals is, that is designed specifically to improve the task accomplishment by problem solving procedures and skills and then solving the pro ma team's major problems. Also, uh, Ms. Neelam Saraswath and uh, Shilpi Kandewal states that uh, to make team building activity live up to its true potential and to fetch maximum results out of it, it is, it is necessary to integrate the team building uh, with the real work time goals. It is likely long term effectiveness of the team building event is enhanced when the organization incorporates annual team building events in a overall company structure. So team building, uh, also he states that, they state that uh, team building should result in actionable ideas to help the team and organization achieve their goals, continued learning and reinforcement are necessities. Then considering the team building concept for the construction industry, uh, Mike Bresner and Marshall identifies that in all projects, collaboration was seen as important which has led uh, and considerable emphasis was placed upon developing team culture and fostering the right attitudes. Team building also consistently emerges as a desirable and often necessary way of helping the aligned teams behind project goals and objectives. This could be facilitated by functional conflicts. Um, According to Hapu Arachi and Dr. Se, uh, Sepani Sena Ratnas, uh, in their research on, uh, on their research on construction project teams and development a case study in Sri Lanka, they identified that some members have I indicated that conflicts occur when the team is transferring from design stage to the construction stage or from one trade to another. It is clear that uh, construction uh, teams are fairly different from the ideal teams, mainly due to lack of a mutual accountability and uh, common objective. It was also identified that progression through team development process has a strong positive relationship on team learning. So the research gap I identified was that uh, is that there is a need of integrating the key professionals through team building concept in order to convert the dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts for the better performance of the construction industry. So in conclusion, diversification of key professionals in the construction industry from their main roles are to be seen as a significant 
state or a feature in the current state of Sri Lankan construction industry and this condition has mainly arise due to the occurrence of dysfunctional conflicts with regard to knowledge sharing among the different professionals and cultural issues dominant in the construction industry. Further, there was a finding that respective managers and professionals have identified the scope of occupation due to some misinterpretations in their job descriptions as some of the duties have been overlapped. The limitations of my study are uh, data collection was carried out through only secondary data sources not, but not through prim primary data sources and this literature analysis supports the and supports to strengthen the research gap in converting the dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts. Thereby it is needed to apply the team building concept practically to enhance the pro performance of the construction projects. This synergy effect from the team spirit could be utilized to have functional conflicts for the better performance. So my recommendations are by means of team building concept, the team leader must resolve dysfunctional conflicts by recognizing the ambitions, abilities and the true potentials of the employees and to attempt, moti attempt to motivate and stimulate employees when there are too little conflict and or calm the employees temper when and bring them back to work together more effectively by converting dysfunctional conflicts to functional conflicts. The, the need of uh, integrating the key professions in the construction industry is to be met and strengthened practically and theoretically from further studies in this research area. Thank you.